Question number one, what topic has been met with most resistance when discussing with professors slash peers? Um, man, I, I wish there was just one topic, honestly, but there's, I mean, so many things. Um, uh, when we're talking, I, I think posture is a, is a big one that comes to mind. Uh, I couldn't tell you how many times I hear uh, answer your public tale uh, in, in the classroom, whether it's from a professor or, or, or a classmate. Um, I'm working on fixing uh, my anterior pelvic tilt right now. Oh, he's a mess. If you can't see, he's, he's a mess. I could tell looking at you. You're. <laughs> I got that whole cross syndrome. It's. I got that cross syndrome. Oh, it'll get you. How are you getting oxygen to your tissues? I don't know. It's <laughs> messing with your breathing. It's. So, anyways, I probably just piss off some people right there. Come, yeah, <laughs> be, be nice. It's, we'll we'll edit the show if we need to for you. Oh, okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah. Um, so. Uh, I think posture is a big one that I, I hear talked about a lot um, in the clinic. Another one is probably uh, uh, movement technique, like uh, correct incorrect movement. Um, you hear that a lot. Like if you want you want to squat, you got to make sure your knees are here, your hips are here. You don't want to lean over too much because then your back can get hurt. Um, and uh, and it's hard for me to be like, ah, I mean, like. Uh, it's okay to lift your back if you can tolerate it, you know, like it's not necessarily uh, 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 if we're putting more load on a tissue, it's okay as, as long as we can tolerate it and that's kind of uh, the message I preach and whether or not it gets across, I, I mean, I can't answer for the, my classmates and uh, I think the last one would be trigger points, that's I, I hear that a lot, it's actually in my physiology, exercise physiology curriculum um, mm. so um, trigger points and, and when I whenever I ask questions I sound like an idiot they're like I'm like well what do you mean like what are trigger points what's the hypothesis has it been proven and they're like you don't Nate you don't know what trigger points are and I'm like ah, okay, that's not what I meant but yeah all right it does it, it kind of speaks to more underlying issues right I think I always go kind of go back and forth with like you should you know people should naturally question things you should be naturally skeptical blah 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 and and i and i believe that that's true you shouldn't take everything at face value but at the same time you're also paying hundred thousand dollars to go to this school that is you i don't so sometimes i don't blame students for just for taking what they learn in in that school and like taking it at face value because why wouldn't they it's a doctoral program they're paying a lot of money you would assume what you're learning is top notch and so like when you're asking these questions do we actually know what trigger points are and and people are just flabbergasted what you don't know what a trigger point is we learned that on day one i think it just speaks to a a deeper issue because now it's not really a, a trigger point conversation it's more of a conversation on is our is are we up to date on what we're learning in general you know um well we'll take those those topics how do you start those conversations with with fellow students do you install my question oh sorry you ask it jared ask it right now no, no it's too late go for no, it go, it's you, fine uh, it's fine i'm fine okay <laughs> uh so i mean yeah a lot of it comes up when i'm studying with students um and and i could probably i could i don't say could probably i can be better at you know um asking more questions and stuff but it's it's really difficult because uh we're all kind of on like the equal uh, playing ground where we're all like, uh, we all are first year students. We really don't know anything. So um, it's kind of difficult for me to like, for them to like trust my questioning. So anytime I question something, it's like, man, this Nate guy is just stupid or something, you know? Um, but I, I try to bring it up and I, I still try to cite literature and, 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 and trying to, I try to let them know, like, you know, I didn't have these beliefs at first. Like, I used to just say, like, dude, dry needling is awesome. You know, I have a family friend, actually, who's an acupuncturist. Um, and and I used to get acupunctured all the time because I played golf. My back always hurt. So I always got acupuncture. Um, and I, I still have I, – I got an email not too long ago about my subscription with the joint chiropractic, you know, and – they're like, hey, you should renew your, your subscription and stuff. So like, I, I used to have all these beliefs. Um, and I think it's it's important to make that clear with my with my classmates and say like, hey, I had these beliefs. It's just I was presented with new evidence um, that 
I mean, maybe not at the time, quite, like made me change my mind, but I was like, now nah, I'm starting to ask questions like, dang, like, why do I believe that? Why is this a thing? Mm-hmm. Um, why are we doing this? Why is it so prevalent? And, 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 and what's actually happening at the, at the structural level? I, I just kind of always thought like acupuncture helps. Uh, my joints are out of line. Cracking it helps. Um, but I started questioning it and it, it's slowly changed my mind until like now I'm just like, eh, I would never get acupunctured or, mm-hmm. or I mean, I would get cracked. It feels good. So sue me. <laughs> it does. It does. Do you, I'm curious, do you, do you find that <clears throat> any, any people, we'll, we'll keep saying classmates cause it's easy to say, but any people in general, um, are receptive to you know an approach or to your approach of saying like hey you know do we know this like what do we actually understand about this or or are most people in your experience turned off by that uh i mean i would say most people are turned off but there are people who are receptive a lot of my i mean a lot some classmates there's a good chunk of classmates that are like oh really like it's okay to lift with your back and and, and that kind of stuff so Mm -hmm. Um, there are some people who are more open to it, more receptive. I think, um, people who at least who are smarter or have been around longer or they think they're smarter, um, are less receptive. Um, but, uh, I'll, I'll say this, like my, my roommates who aren't physical therapy students or anything exercise science like that, they're receptive to a lot Mm -hmm. of the, the stuff that I say that kind of might challenge their original beliefs so Mm -hmm. that's like here or there for sure um i I imagine that part of what plays into this especially for people who have some skin in the game and have been in it for a while is this sort of sunk cost um fallacy it's like i've been i've thought this for so long and i've practiced this way for so long that it's it's really distressing and and extremely inconvenient to try to change my approach and my explanations now. Yeah. I mean, would you guys agree with that? Yeah. And, and I would say like, like, cause a lot of people when they practice like a certain way, like, Oh, I've been telling people like their posture's bad. And, and if I change my mind, it's like, man, there's a zillion patients I told this. And, and what about those guys? And, mm-hmm. and I could say like, man, I've told a zillion athletes, like, don't let your knees come in. If you squat, like that's gonna, oh, yeah. you're gonna blow up your knees one day or, you know, I yeah. told uh, the at Nebraska and at the the place I used to work at, we did a lot of PRI um, stuff, and mm-hmm. I, I was sold out uh, with with PRI at that time. And I'm kind of like, man, now I would totally say something different. Um, um, so yeah, I, I, I can say the same. Like, hey, it's okay. Like, I think it's never too late to like, hey, change your mind, uh, change your mind, or at least question what you previously did. You know. Yeah. To jump in there, I've got two thoughts. <clears throat> and I've been that guy too. I think I think all three of us could agree that, you know, we were those people who who thought those things and said those things. Um just recently I had a, had a student back in the summertime and uh Greg Lehman came up to Toronto to do um a free seminar, part of the Physio Night Out series. So we went out and checked that out. And he was talking about uh, tendinopathies. And previously I had told patients as part of my spiel you know, hey, we know the tendons heal, they heal pretty well, they're, they're you know, I think I had said they take some time, but they heal pretty well, and then he talked about tendonopathy, he's like, no, they don't heal very they well, heal. they may not heal at all. <laughs> no, and I'm like, son of a bitch, now i got to change everything that I say, you know, and I thought, just like you said, Nate, about, you know, oh, shoot, there are so many people that I've told this to, and realistically, like, I'm not going to call them up, be like, hey, that, remember that one thing that I told you that one time? This is actually how it is, but I think that a hallmark of really, I don't know, for lack of a better term, really good, trustworthy clinicians and researchers um, is that they operate on the best information available at that time, and they're not afraid to say I was wrong. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I saw a comment on Instagram the other day talking about how we need to kind of accept and embrace the fact that how we treat or what we think today, you know, it's probably going to be very different from what we think, you know, in, in a year, two years. I've seen that be the case in, you know, uh, the last few months, let alone the last two, three years. So, uh, and I think that's how it should be, because I think that means that we're at least attuned to and probably seeking out newer or current and and better information. And we're 
hopefully challenging our biases, you know, to see how can we be better and to use the the phrase everyone likes to try to be less wrong. All right. All right. Yeah. That's one of my goals here too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think there's some, that some cost fallacy is definitely relevant to a first year student in regards to how much money they're spending for school. And you're going to, like I said, kind of take things at, at face value if you're, if you're putting that type of investment in. Um, Nate, I, I loved what you said where, you know, where your first years and we really don't know anything because we don't, nobody, none of us know anything. And, and I, I'm actually much less, much, much less sure of myself right now than I was my first year of PT school. And I think it has everything to do with ego. And you actually mentioned something about some of your classmates who are more confident are actually less open. And I think that I was very guilty of that coming in, thinking that I knew stuff at all and it definitely hindered my learning and it sounds like to me you've kept kind of that humble mentality and just said well maybe let's let's think about this a little bit and and to me that's really all school is about a doctoral program you know doctor is kind of is latin for to teach if i'm not mistaken and really a doctoral postgrad program should be teaching you how to think the specific content obviously can be helpful you know we're learning how uh how not to kill people and we don't as pts really don't have to worry about that anyway uh, but i think just learning how to think and learning how to learning to question things in a healthy way and, and spark discussion i would just encourage you to keep going and don't be discouraged if you ask a question and people think you're a dumbass because you're asking a question because i know that feeling when you ask something people assume that you're stupid because you're asking a question like you don't right. know like you have no mental representation of what you're asking, and that's why I'm asking. But really, it's probably the opposite. You've actually pondered the ideas long enough to think about the nuance and and to question the things, and that's why you're you're coming up with that. And and so, you know, I just encourage you to to keep doing that. And. Um.